Hello, thank you for joining this presentation on power generation from water to watts. My name is Lisa Rollins and I'm a general engineer at BPA. And my name is Ayodele Do, and I'm a supervisory electronics engineer at BPA. In case you're wondering what Bonneville Power Administration is all about and how it came into existence, we're a nonprofit and self-funded agency under the U.S. Department of Energy. The agency has been around for 83 years. Congress created it to deliver and sell power from Bonneville Dam. We market wholesale electrical power from 31 federal hydroelectric dams along the Columbia River in the Northwest, one non-federal nuclear plant, and several small non-federal power plants. In addition to power services, transmission services is a key part of the agency's operations. Our transmission lines and towers move electricity around the Pacific Northwest. Promoting energy efficiency to the residential, commercial, industrial, federal, and agricultural sectors and investing in the environment, fish and wildlife are also critical to the mission of BPA. Not only does the agency seek to deliver power at the best value, but it strives to do so while mitigating the impacts on the environment. Today, Io and I will talk about our roles in power services and transmission and how our work contributes to the mission of BPA. Did you know people have been harnessing the power of water for centuries? The Greeks used water wheels to grind wheat more than 2000 years ago in the 1700s. In the 1700s, water helped power the Industrial Revolution, and in 1882, the world's first commercial hydroelectric power plant began. In present day, hydropower is in nearly every state. In fact, your neighbor, Alabama, is among the top five states that produces hydroelectricity in the country. And there is hydroelectricity on all the permanently inhabited continents and many islands use it as a source of clean power too. So that's well over 150 countries. Think of hydropower as power derived from the energy of falling or fast running water. In simple terms, water plus gravity equals hydropower. Though there are a few different types of hydropower plants, they each produce power in much the same way. As water flows through a powerhouse, the pressure of that falling water turns a large turbine that looks like a ship's propeller, such as the one shown in the animation. The spinning turbine turns a shaft that rotates a series of magnets past copper coils in a generator to create electricity. From the powerhouse, transmission lines carry that electricity to communities where local utilities distribute it to consumers. To give you an idea of how large these hydroelectric dams are, a typical Kaplan plant on the Columbia River, the height of a turbine unit is equivalent to, six, uh, to a 16-story building. John Day, a project BPA markets energy from, is about 160 feet, or one and a half times the size of a football field from the bottom of the draft tube to the top of the generator. About 50 feet or half the size of that field of the turbine is embedded below the riverbed. So that's pretty amazing, huh? Grand Coulee is another project that is the largest hydroelectric dam in the US and the seventh largest in the world. The generation from one installed turbine unit at Grand Coulee is 805 megawatts. One of the key advantages to hydropower are it's clean, renewable, and affordable. Because they are powered by water, dams do not produce emissions. BPA provides about 28% of the electric power used in the Northwest, primarily hydroelectric. As a result, this offsets carbon emissions equivalent to 10 million cars. When the sun sets and the wind fades, the river rolls on. The perpetual nature of hydropower makes it the perfect companion for other renewable energy sources, primarily wind and solar. Just like hydropower, 
new renewables benefit the region in many ways, from creating jobs to creating uh, to keeping our air clean. But unlike hydropower, these are variable sources, meaning they turn on and off at the whim of Mother Nature, not necessarily when people need them the most. This poses a challenge for transmission operators who must ensure the amount of power produced equals the amount being consumed, second by second. This constant balance is crucial for system reliability, that is, to keep the lights on. At BPA, the roles of engineers are vast and vary depending on the organization you work in. My role in power services entails working in the regional coordination and long-term planning group. The purpose of this group is to carry out studies that coordinate the operation of hydroelectric dams in the Northwest. This coordination helps minimize flood risks and optimize pop power generation in the region. I apply complex mathematical formulas to model and analyze the operation of the Columbia River system including several hydro projects in Canada. What I love most about my job are the, are the amazing opportunities to travel and visit the various projects throughout the region. I also enjoy the challenging assignments I've worked on since coming to BPA. Many of these assignments involve working on a multidisciplinary team consisting of economists, mathematicians, hydrologists, biologists, and other professionals to solve complex problems. My role at BPA doesn't always involve sitting behind a computer and executing hydro models. I've been able to tour some of the projects I model and see firsthand how they operate in real time. This verse video I'm about to show uh, shows operations at Bonneville Dam. At this very same dam, there are installed fish ladders that help with fish passage. This dam also has a fish passage center where there are fish counters that sit in front of a glass window and monitor the type of fish going upstream. Monitoring fish passage helps establish fishing limits and tells us if fish populations are growing. Now that you have some background on the Power Services Organization, I will hand it over to Io to talk about the transmission side of things at BPA. Thank you, Salisa. Regardless of geographical location and the source of power, transmission lines are a critical piece of infrastructure needed to deliver electricity to customers. BPA operates and owns one of the nation's largest high voltage transmission systems. BPA's transmission system contains more than 15,000 miles of high voltage line, enough to stretch over halfway around the earth. This equates to about three fourths of the high voltage transmission in its service territory, which includes Oregon, Idaho, Washington, Western Montana, and small parts of Eastern Montana, California, Nevada, Utah, and Wyoming. BPA provides transmission to public and private utilities in our region. We also directly serve large scale industrial operations, such as military bases, aluminum plants, and chemical manufacturers. Here's a look on how our power grid works in the Pacific Northwest. Once the force of flowing river is turned into electricity at the hydro power dams, it still has a long way to go before reaching your house, your business or school. This energy now must flow along transmission lines. When electricity first reaches, when electricity first leaves a dam, it is, as, it is at a high voltage of 115 kV, <clears throat> meaning, excuse me, meaning that it's very powerful 
too powerful to run our appliances and electronics. High voltage transmission is the preferred method to move electricity along long distances because less electricity is lost in transit. High voltage transmission lines or conductors are typically strong between tall steel towers, the kind that you see along highways and through the countryside. When electricity near cities and communities, it passes through a substation that uses transformers to change the electricity into a lower, more usable voltage. From here, it will travel on distribution lines. How do you think the power gets to your house? Well, it travels over huge transmission lines to get around the region. That is the ones you see on along huge highways and transmits the power to utilities and that then sell it to consumers such as households. In Atlanta, for example, the utility provider selling to consumers would be Georgia Power. Pretty simple concept, huh? But it takes a lot of people to make this happen. I have been with BPA for over nine years in transmission services. For over six years, I worked at one of our two control centers in the operations support group. The purpose of this group is to provide real-time engineering support to the transmission grid system operators in running the transmission grid safely and reliably. My expertise was to provide technical guidance to the system operators in the area of metering and communications. Today, I work as an engineering supervisor to, to nine engineers and a CAD technician in a group called Communications and Control Planning. This group is responsible for putting together plans and policies to meet future needs and reliability requirements for BPA's telecommunications system, which includes fiber optic and radio systems, et cetera. All this is necessary for the transmission grid to operate safely and reliably. Engineers in my group use math, CAD tools, and other applications to put together an electrical schematic, which is a drawing, to meet the, the telecommunications request for a project. What I most enjoy about working in BPA is the opportunity to interact with many different people, which includes engineers and non-engineers, all to fulfill the mission that BPA has. I also enjoy collaborating with other representatives outside of BPA to work together and solve problems in meeting the needs of our customers. Lastly, I enjoy working with and supporting the engineers in my group to keep growing in their knowledge and skill to be better engineers in their role. So have you ever wondered how those big transmission towers get built? Well, let's take a look at a video showing this process.
Well, that's pretty amazing, huh? If you're not afraid of ice and you love working outdoors and enjoying math, BP has alignment apprenticeship program as well. The agency ha also has many hands on technical positions. There are a lot of exciting careers in the energy industry. BPA primarily employs engineers in the civil, electrical, mechanical um, fields. We also have a couple of nuclear and environmental engineers at the agency as well. Like other types of businesses, we also have lawyers, human resource folks, communications and media, finance and accounting people, and a bunch of other jobs. Some jobs require college degrees, while others can be learned on the job through an apprenticeship program or certification program. And finally, if you want to learn more about BPA and, um, and want us to provide a presentation, a career day presentation, feel free to reach out to the African American Resource Group. Uh, our email is aarg at bpa.gov. You can also reach out to the BP Ambassadors Program and a contact will get back to you. And that email is bpaambassadors at bpa.gov. And uh, you can also reach out to our Diversity and Inclusion Office at diversity at bpa.gov. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.